I've said it. I'll keep saying it. One of the nice things about a acquiring or drafting guys with injuries or having injuries in the season is that those guys come back and you just naturally kind of forget about them because that's the way the NFL works. You can't be sitting around waiting for guys. You have to move on and go on to the next person. Well, there's a guy that we're not talking about enough that I've I've been having my eye on since we drafted him uh, a couple of years ago. He should be fully healthy and ready to go. I was looking at our depth chart. Look at these guys that are kind of coming back from injuries or suspensions, uh, both for Jamison Williams, Vitae, Romeo, uh, Tracy Walker. But the guy I'm talking about is, where's he at? Stand by. Where's he at? Is uh, I can't even see him. Oh, James Mitchell right here. James Mitchell, tight end, Virginia Tech. Remember, we drafted him in the fifth round because he has an ACL injury. Should have been a third rounder. Instead, we get him in the fifth round. It happened a lot earlier than Jamison Williams' injury, so he was able to come back um, kind of midway through the season, played a little bit, even after the Hawkinson trade. Didn't play a ton, but caught, caught a touchdown pass, was able to get open a few times. He is a really good dynamic player, and we've forgotten about him because of Sam Laporta comes in. Brock Wright ended up playing well. Zilstra played well in a limited role. Not a limited. I mean, he's kind of one of the one of the main guys, him and Brock Wright. But you get Sam Laporta, you're like, all right, cool. The tight end room's back because you know we had Hutchinson. Don't forget about James Mitchell. So James Mitchell and Pride of Detroit was all over this. They're talking about it as well. They absolutely loved him. Here's a couple of things that you need to know about, about him and why he's going to be really good. So even after the Hawkinson trade. The Hawkinson trade. Well, the Lions tight ends did score nine touchdowns. They only counted for 33 receptions and 287 yards, which is pretty incredible because like 80 of that, no, 50 of that was the uh, the Brock Wright Jets game. Legendary. Love it. So that's not one player. That's the entire group. So the overall tight end group, not great. But in year two of Ben Johnson's offense, the Lions will look to start utilizing the tight end position more, especially because they selected Sam Laporta. But for Mich for Mitchell, it seems he could see quite an uptick in play as well. And now his new tight end coach said, hey, look, I give him a lot of credit for being out there last year. Remember, they took him really slow, really slow. Even he was technically healthy, even football healthy, really at the start of the season. But it's you're a rookie, you know, the whole thing, right? And so it's just hard to get back into the swing of things but then he does halfway through the year but he says hey coming back off of an acl i'm excited to see him in his second year off of the acl i think it's an important year to grow and develop i think there's a lot of room for him to grow that is the key for me right there and, and we'll go back to that in just a second but here's his here's his bio coming out of college athletic 6'4 250 good arm uh Good arm length, good hand size. He was a do it all. That was his thing. He could he could block. He could pass catch. He was a quarterback in high school. He was an absolute stud in Virginia high school sports. He was a four time all all Virginia tight end. Then he goes to quarterback. Then he plays. You know, so he's just all over the place. Should have been just a solid third round pick, but he has the ACL. That's Brad Holmes' little competitive edge especially he had the the ability to do it when we're, we're rebuilding we've got a little bit of time takes james james mitchell so we're just like let me know i'll pause here let me let me know in the comments james mitchell if you're like no nah, i'm good with him or yes he's got something i think he absolutely has something should be like our main tight end at, at, in some ways but again he's coming off the acl and really <clears throat> excuse me tight end and running back tight end and running back for me uh this offseason i learned a lot um and i and i thank brad holmes that running back we improved tight end you know we had brock Wright, shane zylstra i never bought into hawkinson i promise you that i'm not just saying that because he's not on our team anymore i never bought into hawkinson i could not figure hawkinson out couldn't really block never was open like wide open you know it was always all right, contested, seven yards. It was, everything was hard. And I was like, man, what, is he is he good? I don't think he is. But, you know, he's early enough in his career. He's right in the DeAndre Swift category for me. Uh, he, next year. Oh, man, next year he's going to take that leap. And it just never really came true. So now all of a sudden you've got James Mitchell, 6'4", 
second year. Sam Laporta, rookie. Brock Wright is going to kind of be the guy we actually lean on in the starter. He can block and he can um, get out and, and pass catch enough. But really, Sam Laporta and James Mitchell, I think, are the future of tight end position. And the tight end position is so much better. Zylstra, love you. He's probably out. These are your three tight ends. Greatly improved. I mean, greatly improved, especially from like the you want to talk about greatly improved, man. I'm going to look up something here. Remember the 2020 tight end room with uh, with the Detroit Lions, Matt Patricia. I got some names for you in that tight end room that were just like, what are we doing? Uh, let me pull this up. Um, this is just unbelievable. Okay, so this is, this is from 2020, and hold on, hold on. Oh, I can't find it. Whatever. Okay, let's just, man. I really wanted to find that. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here's the tight ends. I don't have it on the screen. Hang with me. Here we go. Our tight ends in 2020 were Hawkinson, rookie Hawkinson, trying to just figure out life. Jesse James. There's the name. Jesse James. We're like, yeah, we'll give you a bunch of money to be a number two tight end and be not good. And then Hunter Bryant, Hunter Bryant. Man, this 2020 roster is so bad. Kenny Galladay and Cephas were your, were your uh, wide receivers. And Marvin Jones. Okay. So Marvin Jones is one. He's legit. Kenny Galladay trying, trying to figure it out. Uh, defensively, just really quick, just defensively. The This is – you want to know why we were bad. Here's who was trying to stop the run. Defensive tackle, Danny Shelton and John Penasini are your – starting defensive tackles and nick williams man okay I, I i got carried away there i got too fired up i was just jesse james came to my mind i had to figure that out jesse james was the tight end thank you brad holmes just thank you so much for improving the roster the talent the depth cap cap space is under control we can we can just keep doing this we can you know like that's the thing cap space is good uh, we can just kind of keep doing this. We can draft well each and every year. We can sign the right free agents. Don't overpay. Everything's just kind of flowing the right way. You've got you've got talent behind guys. So when they go to uh, retire or go into free agency at older ages, you can be like, okay, thank you for your service and see ya. Versus, I don't know. Do we pay them? Do we not? Do we? What do we do? What do we do? Man, thank you, Brad Holmes. This turned this turned into a thank you, Brad Holmes video because I do think James James Mitchell is going to be really good, and I can't wait to see him on the field. I can't wait to see our offense. Remember, year two, Ben Johnson. We've only been with Ben Johnson one full year, and in that one full year, Jared Goff looked comfortable. And thank you, Ben Johnson, for for doing what Ben what uh, Jared Goff likes. Right, Jared you're, Jared, you're the quarterback. What do you like? I like play action. I like being under center. I love that. I love moving the pocket. I love, I love the jet motion. All the things that an innovative offense needs, the Detroit Lions do it. Thank you, Ben Johnson. But that was year one. So year two, Jared Goff's going to be comfortable, know what Ben Johnson's doing, know what uh, they're doing on down and distance, a much improved off um, running back room. And then we're not even talking about the offensive line for the first time. And again, cross our fingers here because we don't play a game until September, but you got Vitae back. You've got Panay Sewell now is just legit stud. If you ever get bored watching a game and you don't, but if you ever just want to watch something really good, watch Panay Sewell. I mean, stone walls, guys play after play Decker, you got, I mean, you've got a great offensive line, a quarterback, wide receivers that can hold their own just totally fine. And then you got Jamison Williams, week seven. I mean, offensively, we're there and we can do a lot of things. So let me know your thoughts in the comments and we'll see all of you on the next one.